a QRP equipment review. This is a QRP attenuator sold by the Crystal Set Society. It's got a power handling capacity of 5 watts. There are four switches that step in at various attenuators. Minus 3 dB and the other three are minus 6 dB. You can switch to be a dummy load or straight through to the antenna. And there's a transmit and receive function. That's basically with when you want the attenuator in, you have it on transmit. And when you want it to have it straight through, you just have it on receive. Or you can use it if you just don't want any attenuation. There's an LED that lights up when there's around 5 watts power. It's in a small and light plastic box. I ordered it because it would be a handy piece of equipment and the cost was not much more than buying all the parts separately. The printed circuit board in particular is a very high quality. There's also a neat plastic box and a printed front label. It's not actually a sticky label so what I did was I just put some book covering over it and then glued it to the front of the case. Now you must be aware that the case is not pre-drilled. You must drill holes yourself. These are the instructions. Quite detailed, step by step, also with a few photos. A large picture shows how the circuit board is assembled. A nice touch is they also send you a copy of their newsletter with various crystal set and simple receiver projects. How did assembly go? I should point out if you do buy this kit there is a small error in the instructions. It mentions a 10k ohm resistor. That should actually only be a 1k. The correct component was supplied though. Another thing to be wary of is the number of studs inside the case. These are actually not needed. The instructions say you needed to remove 8 but in my box there are only six to remove. In particular, don't remove the two long studs. You'll need these for the mounting screws. The kit went together well and I'd recommend it. However, there's some claims made that I hope are just careless mistakes. The instructions say there are 15 half power steps to as low as 0.2 milliwatts. That's with 5 watts drive. Look at the front panel. 3dB, 6dB, 6dB and 6dB. A total of 21dB. 5 watts less 21dB is around 4 milliwatts. Much higher than the 0.2 milliwatts claimed. Also, there's not as many steps as the 15 claimed. You'd need more switches for that. There's a similar problem at the back of the instructions. There's a list showing switch positions and your power output. But the dB of attenuation when you add it up does not correlate with what should be the power you're getting out. The amount of attenuation that you can get is overestimated. It starts off correct but the errors creep in about halfway down. One use for an attenuator is RISPA to see how low you can go and still be decoded. I've got another attenuator that you've probably seen before. The two attenuators can cut the signal by up to 35 dB. Here I've got 28 dB switched in, 21 dB from the Midnight Science attenuator and 7 dB from the Home Brew attenuator. I've been experimenting with powers of well under 100 milliwatts. VK2XN, VK1TXR and VK1KF have all decoded my signal. VK1KF heard me at 1 milliwatt, VK1TXR at 5 milliwatts, and VK2XN, who's a lot further away, at 10 milliwatts. So what's the verdict? I recommend it. The shipping was fast, it went together well, the instructions are generally well written, and it's a good quality product. But if you're into extreme QRP, 21 dB attenuation is not enough you really want to go to 30 or 40 dB. If you've got an FT817, you can just drop the power down to 500 milliwatts. That'll give you an extra 10 dB. But it would be good to have gone even lower. Perhaps in a future production of the kit, 
one or two of the 6 dB pads could be 12 dB. That would allow much more attenuation to have been selected.